testing a range of engineering filaments for the biggest high school STEM competition in the world. If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been modifying an Ender 5 to be an enclosed printer to print with a range of engineering filaments. You might also know that I enter my students into the F1 in Schools competition and that these guys here are the current Australian champions preparing for the World Finals in Abu Dhabi. I know a lot of people are interested in what's happening with the Ender 5, so we'll start by recapping that. In part one of the series, I added an all metal hot end a high temperature capable wham bam flexible bed as well as the first enclosure panels. In a later part I added a design for the lid sealed on the side by nylon brushes. Since then I designed and printed some simple lugs to stop the lid from having any chance of moving around and also these belt covers which stop the nylon brushes from having any chance of getting caught as well. In the previous video I was using a heater cartridge on a heat sink with a fan to try and heat the chamber but it was massively underpowered. A gentleman named Rod in the comments pointed me towards a PTC self-regulating heater. I found some cheap ones on eBay, ordered them, and they came pretty quickly. I added insulation tape to all of my printed electronics enclosure, as well as to the acrylic panels either side of the heater. Despite being mains powered, the output of the heater was still underwhelming. By this stage, Rod was in touch via email and giving me some much appreciated pointers on how to refine the setup. I had two heaters, two fans, and the same mounting system as before, except this time up the top of the printer, where it could provide heat at printing height. The result was an improvement, and I could just about hit 70 degrees inside when the heated bed was on at the same time. As you'll see in this video, that's not really quite enough, and my setup is very inefficient, with large gaps around that allow the hot air to escape. So with that in mind, here's a lesson in how to do it properly, courtesy of a gentleman named Adrian. You can see he's built a fully insulated enclosure around the 3D printer with thick foam blocks on the inside to stop heat escaping. The stepper motors are cooled via water and all of the air inside the chamber is filtered and ducted out of the room and look at the results. Enormous warp free ABS parts, so impressive and I'll be trying to adopt some of these principles as I refine my setup. As for the people standing in the room with me, I had a video vlog back in March detailing how they went to Melbourne for the Australian finals excelling at the many elements that make up this competition and ultimately winning through as Australian champions to compete overseas in Abu Dhabi in November. Now I have here a range of filaments that have been used to print a sample front wing designed by the team. But normally you just print in PLA, so really we need a reason to use all of these different filaments. To work out why, we'll have a quick Q&A with the team. I'm Finn Hasey, the manufacturing engineer. I'm Matt Foster, the graphic designer. I'm Nicholas Hayes, the design engineer. And I'm Zach Burgess, the Collaboration Manager, and together we're Paradoxon. If you saw the earlier video, you might be wondering why the team is no longer called Thrust Vector, and why is that? The regulations make us combine with another team, our new name is Paradoxon. In the earlier video, we saw there was a fifth member, so Finn, what happened to Mira? Uh, she had too many commitments, so she decided to leave the team. Can you describe for people the nature of how the cars are raced? So the cars are raced down a 20 metre track at around 100 kilometres per hour and they're propelled by a carbon dioxide cylinder that slots into the back. The cars finish by hitting a wall of towers at the end of the track. Besides the testing we're going to do today, what other types of testing do you do to develop your car? We do various types of physical testing which involves gathering data on how the cars actually run on a track. We also do virtual testing through simulations of CFD, computational fluid dynamics, and finite element analysis, which is the structural testing of the car to test the strength. So it sounds like this front wing goes through a lot. When you're designing it, what's important to get right in the design and how are we gonna test that with these filaments? The strength of the front wing, how strong it can handle the force of the car decelerating at the end of the track, which is estimated to be around minus 20 G. We're also gonna be testing their mass and weight on scales. We have a minimum weight and we wanna make sure we hit it. We want to make sure that our front wing is cost effective, spending the least amount of money but getting the highest amount of quality. We're looking to have the smoothest surface finish to minimise drag. As easy to print as possible, with as little as sanding as possible. We want to make sure that our front wing is as accurate to the CAD model as possible. We will test this with calipers. Looking at this, it seems pretty simple. Is this your actual design for the competition? Not entirely, because we've received a warning that there is a chance other teams will plagiarise our work. 
And that's a real thing. It's pretty high stakes for this competition being the biggest one in the world. So we have to be limited in our testing. But anyway, let's proceed. All of these filaments here are available on the X3D website. Most of them are X3D Pro branded and there's also a Form Futura one. When I was printing them, I tried to keep consistent specs. That means the same layer height of 0.16 millimeters, three shells, three on the bottom, four on the top, but I varied the speed and the temperature as per the directions on the site, as well as the feedback from the customers. First up, we have X3D Pro PLA. The regular price is $39 per kilo, but you can quite often get on sale. There's a multitude of colors and I find the quality of this really good. Yes, they're my sponsor, but I was already a customer before entering this arrangement. PLA was included in this test as our baseline. It's easy to get, it's affordable, and it's quite easy to print. It's the go-to filament for most 3D printers. So how did it compare? I printed straight onto the Wham Bam PEX sheet at 60 millimeters a second, no problems with adhering, no need for a heated chamber, and no warping. The price for this brand is $40 per kilo and the mass is 4.97 grams. The team ranked the surface finish 4th out of the 6 and found the accuracy a little bit average, between 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters out. I guess I should tune my flow rates. As you might expect, the PLA passed the impact test with flying colors. There was no damage and the part looked exactly the same as it did before the test. The next filament was the X3D Pro Nylon, coming in at $55 a kilo. Nylon is incredibly tough, much stronger and more durable than PLA with a little bit of flex as well. It has two Achilles heels. It's not very easy to print and it's hydroscopic, absorbing moisture from the air. To avoid the moisture, I unsealed all of these filaments immediately before printing. The nylon peeled straight off the PEX, so I hit up the Prusa Chat to see if I could try their powder coated build plate. They said yes, but it peeled straight off that as well. The X3D website recommended painter's tape, so I put a layer down and it stuck. Well, stuck well to the tape, but it still suffered from huge warping. The dimensional inaccuracy is very clear in the final printed model when we look at the underside. Furthermore, the interlay adhesion was off the charts, which made it impossible to remove the support material. I printed this slightly slower at 40 millimeters per second with a heated chamber, but it still suffered from a lot of warping. The price is $55 per kilo, the mass was out as the support material was still fused to it, therefore the surface finish rank was low as well as the tolerance. Obviously people have success with nylon, but my setup at the moment is just not up to it. As you might expect, the strength of the nylon was massively over-engineered for this task. Next up, X3D Pro Polycarbonate, coming in slightly cheaper at $50 a kilo. Like nylon, it's meant to be much stronger than PLA or ABS. Not only that, but it maintains its strength as the temperature increases and it doesn't shudder which means it's not very brittle compared to other filaments. Like nylon, you need to store it carefully as it absorbs a lot of moisture from the air. Also like nylon, it wouldn't stick to PEI based sheets, peeling off almost immediately. This one I stopped early when it was only just still holding on. I did get it to stick amazingly well to build tack, probably too well with the wing breaking apart rather than separating from the build plate cleanly. Apart from this, it actually printed quite cleanly, with minimal warping but a few splits where the layers were starting to come apart. More nozzle temp required for the next time. This would only print successfully on build tack at a really slow print speed. The heated chamber seemed to keep warping to a minimum. Polycarbonate ranked highly for mass, surface finish as well as accuracy. Polycarbonate did not fare well in the impact resistance strength test will no doubt get better results by tweaking the print settings, but for our needs, there are easier to print, better options available. The next filament was X3D ASA, which is something I'd never printed with before. ASA stands for Acrylonitrile Styrene Acrylate, and it's meant to have excellent strength properties, but particularly good in the weather and against UV. It says here it's widely used to prototype in the automotive industry, and it also claims to be much easier to print. ASA is the same price as a polycarbonate at $50 a kilo. This stuff printed beautifully, having no trouble sticking to the PEX sheet and then flexing off perfectly. Surface finish wise, I'd say it's a little bit cleaner than PLA and it had no warping. It's also quite nice to the touch, feeling slippery, almost a little bit waxy. This stuff was very easy to print with the recommended settings, straight onto the Wham Bam PEX, heated to 110 degrees Celsius and a print speed of 40 millimeters per second. 
I did use the heated chamber, but I imagine that I don't actually need it. Price is on par with the other filaments. The mass was the second lightest of those tested and the surface finish and accuracy were right up the top as well. The ASA wing had no problems with the impact test, retaining its shape with zero breakage. Overall, I'm impressed with this and I look forward to using it again in the future. Our final FDM filament is polypropylene, but a special one called Pegasus from Form Futura. It's not cheap at $65 for a 500 gram roll, but they make some pretty big claims, saying that this is most likely the lightest filament in the world. To put that into numbers, we're talking 20% lighter than the average polypropylene and 40% lighter than the average PLA. There was no community comments for this filament, therefore it had to go only by the print guidelines on the site. Surprise number one was that this filament was actually very flexible. It didn't have quite the same feel as TPU as it didn't really spring back. It also has a strange texture, not being glossy and rubbery like TPU, but more like a wood filament. Polypropylene is commonly used for life hinges in bottles and other packaging, which probably explains the flex. My end of five is fitted with an EZR extruder, which is normally great at flexibles, but it was no match for this stuff. It would regularly jam and fail the print and require some cleaning out of the EZR. That was easy to do, but I did need another solution. So I turned to my Flexion fitted Cocoon Create Touch, which did a great job. The surface finish is below average and there's little bits of wisping and stringing on the edges. The support material removed, not really that cleanly, and it's flexible as you might expect. This filament requires no special build platform and no heated chamber, and it prints at the moderate speed of 40 millimeters per second with a Flexion extruder. The price is astronomical, but it did live up to the claim of being incredibly light, just over half the weight of PLA. Surface finish and accuracy were a bit below average. Being a flexible filament, the impact test was never in doubt. The wing retained its shape with no changes, even on the thinnest sections. A final material is resin, in the form of properly tough resin. Now I've seen a great test from Stefan on CNC Kitchen for this, and I was keen to try it out myself. I printed the wing on the Moai with the new advanced acrylic plate, as well as the chamber heater, which is required for this tough resin. I followed the Piopoli wiki to get my settings for the machine as well as for the slicer. I didn't attempt to hollow out the wing, instead leaving it solid as it was already quite thin. With this combination, I managed two back-to-back -back prints perfectly reliably and cured them with the Piopoli UV lamp for around two hours. The top surface finish on the part is really outstanding with a layer height of 0.1 millimeters. The downside is on the underside, where the supports are removed, there's lots of little puck marks that will need to be sanded off. We also noted a little bit of distortion, with left to right being slightly different. I did use the heated chamber, but there was minimal warping, probably related to my model orientation. The price is the second most expensive here, and the mass is the heaviest, but I think we can improve that with optimization. The team ranked the surface finish as best, and any inaccuracies were bigger rather than smaller. The impact test was something I was really interested in and it passed with flying colors. You can see there's a little bit of flex in the wing. It showed no signs of snapping, so we threw it at the table as hard as we could. It actually ended up marking the table and the wing was perfectly fine afterwards. Compared to normal resin, this is amazingly strong. So we've finished all of our testing and we've gone through all the criteria we planned. So now it's time to have some conclusions. So I've got some questions for the team. Guys, which was the lightest wing, considering mass is so important? The lightest wing was the polypropylene wing. It's meant to be the lightest filament in the world, so how much lighter was it than the other ones? It was about, probably, two, two and a half grams lighter than most of them. When you measured with the calipers to see which ones were accurate, which ones passed the test? The polycarbonate, the ASA, and the polypropylene all passed the test. When you felt the resin was a little bit warped overall, dimensionally? A little bit, yes slightly larger than the rest of the wings. Next question was, what's the best one to manufacture? And since I printed these, I'm happy to answer that one. PLA was easy, printed it a million times. The only other one that was super easy to do was the ASA. It promised easy printing and it definitely delivered. I don't think I would need the chamber for this, which means I can pick any of my printers, which means we can probably get better quality if we choose this. We had a pretty good drop test going there. So which ones actually passed the strength test? So out of the drop testing, all of the wings did pretty well with only the polycarbonate actually fracturing on the stand. Aerodynamics is also really important. So which one has the best surface finish straight out of the box to minimize skin friction? 
best surface finish we found was the resin, as it was very smooth. There was a little bit of bumps on the underneath, but that's easy to sand out. And overall, out of this preliminary testing, which filament would you be leaning towards for your front wing? We'd probably be leaning towards using the resin because it is very smooth, the, f the finish is excellent. It's fairly, fairly consistent with its accuracy and the weight, we can probably find ways of getting around that. Okay, and what would your second choice be if the resin doesn't work out? Our second choice would probably be the ASA because it was extremely easy to print and survived all of the tests very well. So some of you have probably printed some of these with a lot more success than I had at home, but that's okay because part of our design process is to test all of these back to back and then eliminate the ones that don't work as well for us. It's perfectly acceptable to have failures as long as we can justify why we went in the other direction. If you would like to support this team, they're responsible for all of their own fundraising to get me and all of them over to Abu Dhabi in November. If you can spare a few dollars, there's a link to their GoFundMe page in the description below. If you've got any comments or any tips on what we can do to improve our performance, please leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy 3D printing. Guess you wonder what? G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.